everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. Today, we are doing a little episode that's a little bit different. Uh, we are talking about a new feature film that's coming out called You Gotta Believe, which I think that a lot of the Hallmarkies will enjoy. Inspirational little sports movie. And I got the chance to interview the real life uh, Robbie Ratliff, who's a who's portrayed as a child in this movie uh it's about his little league experience and the the movie is also profiling his dad and so it was neat to get to talk with him and the experience of what it's like having a movie made about your life and about your dad and, and everything and so that was cool talking with robert radliff who is the real life star i guess you'd say of the baseball team featured on the new movie you gotta believe and uh robert thanks so much for coming on talk with us Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. Excited to be here. I'm not sure if I was a star, but I was on the team. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. There you well, go. do you have fond memories of that? Of that? I know it was a tough time for your family, obviously, but was of that whole experience at the Little League World Series? Yeah. Oh, yes, it was awesome. It was uh, still one of the best summers of my life and always will be. Uh, uh -huh. 12 years old. And your only responsibility is to play baseball. It really doesn't yeah. get much better than that. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you still have love of, a love for baseball to this day? I probably, uh, I yeah, to answer your question, yes. Uh, but the main driver that the reason I'm back in love with the sport is because I have a three year old son Aww. who played his first ever baseball season last spring. Aww. He's got his second season coming up in a couple weeks, and uh -huh. coaching him has. Uh, I guess reignited the love for baseball. Nice. Oh, that's yeah. sweet. Yeah. So, uh, what was it like for you to have this movie made? Have a somebody portraying you and, and portraying your father? What was that like? It was. It was obviously, as expected, pretty surreal. Yeah. Um, it was also emotional. Uh, it was also a time where we got to reflect on some awesome memories. Um, mm -hmm. You'll you'll see some scenes in the movie that um i my family you know our youngest boy was not born at the time but my wife and my oldest were there to watch the scene and in santa Rita films did a really good job because it was pretty much exactly how it happened back here oh, with wow. my dad and so that was cool to see emotional but um but also i think good for the soul and good for the heart to mm -hmm. to reflect on yes a, a challenging time but also a really good and um, a really fun and a really inspiring time. So you got to be on set? And see. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, they were great to us. We got to be on set as much as we could afford. Uh, uh -huh. Traveling to Canada as a family was was not the cheapest place uh -huh. to go to. So <laughs> we went, though. I actually got to go there twice. Uh, they were awesome. They, I think that's where my, my son's love for baseball kind of started uh -huh. was because the actors were so good to him. I mean, they, mm. he got to run around and got to run and slide into home and run to first base and hit, and wear, wear a helmet. And it was just, it was a really cool week, week trip to, to yeah. Toronto. Are you a fan of a particular baseball team? Uh, yeah, we, we are, uh, I think right now we're Yankee fans, okay. but obviously, okay. obviously being here, uh, you know, we're Ranger fans being in full words, but, uh -huh. but we're the Yan at the little league ballpark, we're the Yankees. So, uh, oh, right now we're, we're cheering pretty hard for the Yankees as well. Uh -huh. So did Luke Wilson, did he like talk to you at all? Kind of get a flavor for your dad and who he was? Yes, he was great. Um, I mean, he's a pro, right? He's a, yeah. he's oh, a, yeah. He knows what to do. So I don't really think he needed to talk to me. He was very kind and talked to me and asked me a few questions. But at the end of the day, like he read the script, he understood. He 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 did a great job portraying my dad. Uh -huh. Um and 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 I don't think anybody could have done a better job. Yeah, yeah. So I enjoyed his performance cool. for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, how were you able to get through like just this tough time like with your family? Like and I'm sure it brought back a lot of memories of that. Yeah, I think the most important thing is faith. My mom and dad both raised us to believe in God. And so I think through the journey of my dad fighting for his life and then through the months and the years when my dad had passed, um, we first and foremost relied on our faith. Um, but then obviously there's a, you know, a fantastic community 
through St. Andrews Catholic School and then Nolan Catholic High School and then the West Side Little League and the people in Fort Worth. I mean, they just really stood up and made sure that um, we knew that they had our back and then uh -huh. uh, we knew that they loved us and would do anything for us. And it was obvious. So yeah. uh, I think I think faith and community can get you through a lot of hard, hard, mm -hmm. hard things. So were you really the like the underdog team? When you yeah, I, I don't know life. if we were the I don't know if we we're the underdog, but like we definitely weren't thinking we're going to the Little League World Series, right? Like uh -huh. we're just we're just playing baseball, hoping we win the next game, looking forward to a Dr Pepper and a hot dog after the game. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and then and then play capture the flag or play backyard baseball when we got home. Um, but but then it started to click, right? You're like one game away from. I, mean, I remember sitting there and be like, Coach Kelly's like, okay, guys, like no pressure. If we win this game, we go to the Little League World Series and. Next thing you know, we win that game and we're on a bus to DFW Airport and we're flying out on a 4 a.m. flight to Williamsport, Pennsylvania to play in the Little League World Series. Oh my so, gosh. but, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say like we never entered a tournament and they were like, oh, this is the team that's going to win it. Like we never were favored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. That's interesting. That must have been so yeah. exciting. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was cool for the community. And it's cool that Fort Worth got so behind us while we made that run. Uh -huh. Yeah. So there's been so many great baseball themed movies over the years and not including this. Do you have like a favorite? Stay a lot all day. Yeah. 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 Well, it was so fun that you got to have Patrick. Yeah. I got in this to meet movie. Him. Got to meet him when he was filming in Canada. And then next thing you know, like three weeks later, he had asked for our address when we were there, but I didn't really think anything of it. Three weeks later, a signed ball from everybody on the Sandlot shows up. Oh, that he wow you know, for my boys. I mean, that was pretty, that was yeah. pretty cool. Um, but yeah, Sandlot's like the best baseball movie ever. Um, yeah. It's one of my favorites for sure. And rookie, yeah. I mean, rookie of the year is good. Angels in the outfield's good, but, uh -huh. and I'm excited to watch all those. And now I guess also you got to believe with, with my boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can add it to the, like the canon. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Well, thanks so much for talking with me. I really appreciate it. And congrats on the, on uh, the, being involved in the having your story told that's so yeah. fun that's thanks supposed to be so a really much. cool experience thanks so much rachel and thanks for having me ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies patreon do you love hallmarkies podcast especially at christmas do you enjoy the holiday previews recaps interviews and bonus episodes if the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. And uh, yeah, so you've got to believe what we're talking about today. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Mary's here. Hello. And thank you so much for agreeing to do this with me. I really appreciate it. Happy to. I, uh, I my, my, uh, my kids were very excited too. And we can talk about that. Oh, yay. <laughs> Good. I'm so glad. And uh, yeah, would you say you're an inspirational sports movie kind of fan? Completely. Yeah. Myself, to begin with, I've always loved sports growing up. And I love those stories of a team that, um, like the title of this movie that believes, you know, that mm -hmm. feels like they have to, and then this getting everybody involved and everybody feels a part of it. I've always felt that way. And then I yeah. married a, a sports fan and had four boys and then a girl who also <laughs> at the end loves these kinds of uh, inspirational, yeah. you know, films. So ab I'm absolutely a fan. I know you are yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, cause I'm not much of a sports person, uh, but I, but I do like, I like movies about sports much better than I like sports. <laughs> Well, it's just the drama and emotion yeah. of it. Yeah. So for it's sure. A, it's it's an easy win for me. And in particular, movies about baseball are particularly effective. I think I I think it, it I don't think anybody would argue that 
that baseball is the most cinematic of all the sports. Yeah. It has the, the, the game has the pacing and the mm-hmm. space to be able to, to work with that of, you know, and, and the pausing where a, yeah. a batter, you know, is looking out to the outfield, you know, all that stuff. All, it, it has the space for that for sure. And I think, I mean, I, I love baseball. I grew up a fan, but I know many people think the game itself is boring or long. So a movie is really the way to get those highlights of a good game yeah. and have it and to be able to see it without sitting through the whole thing. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's a good point. Because I was I was even thinking, about why is it that baseball is the most cinematic c- cinematic sport? And a part of me was like, well, maybe it's just because it's been kind of part of American culture for so long. Yeah. You know, yep. but, but you're right. It does kind of have that, that pacing to like stop and kind of be with the characters. And also you see their face, which yeah. can be a challenge for other sports like football. And, and I, well, we said that, uh, that uh, swimming is really hard to make cinematic because mm-hmm. your face is in the water. Like you can't see the yeah. you know, kind of what's their emotion, their struggle, yeah. their challenge. Unless it's the backstroke. I'm just yeah. <laughs> and there was a movie this year, Young, Young Woman in the Sea, which I enjoyed I very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they did, I think, about as good a job as you can do, especially with open water, which is especially, you know, hard to kind of capture. But uh, but it's 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 tricky. And it, and what I th- also think is interesting, you just had the Olympics on and there's hardly any movies about the Olympics. You think yeah. like. There would be it's enough like chariots of fire, but yeah, there's like, chariots of fire. There's cutting edge. There's like a few the the, cool, uh, running. cool running. Yeah. There's but a few, but not that many for like how epic and intense you just think it would be sort of a, uh, yeah. and, and I was thinking about it that, that probably the reason behind that is that, is that, yes, it seems like intense and exciting, but like, it's really only the actual like competition for the most part, like being an Olympian is really boring. You know, it's just yeah, years practice, practice, practice. Every practice. day you're running, running, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's practice. <laughs> yeah. And so unless you have something like, say, like an Itania or something like that, which is like a scandal sort of around what's happening or something like that, then maybe it's actually not that interesting. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, Cool Runnings is interesting because like, I don't know if you knew, like, everything aside from the fact that it's a Jamaican bobsled everything is made up like all the all the characters all <laughs> like everything I mean and you don't expect it to be accurate like 100 you know 100 percent. you're not it's not a textbook but I mean I was just surprised when I learned that like literally everything even their yeah. name their fact, everything all of that I know my children will be watching a movie they'll turn to me is this true? And I'm like, let's do some Googling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's loosely based on a true story. And then it's yeah. widely fictionalized. <laughs> Would you say that you have a favorite baseball themed movie? Oh, um, so I love the rookie. I think mm, that one's really, one. really sweet. And then what's mm-hmm. the one I've actually only seen it once. The one with Robert Redford where he's um, the natural. Yeah, the natural. Yeah. I like Moneyball. That's a little yeah, more intrigue, really good one. you know, with the background of players and stats. And I quote that a lot with my husband. Um, <laughs> but I did yeah. not grow up watching like the Angels in the Outfield and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, my parents, I don't, we just never came across it. We lived overseas. My aunts had to send us VHS tapes of movies, mm. <laughs> and that one was never on the list. Right. So, but I know people like those. So. Yeah, I, ones. I, for me, I would, it would definitely be filled with dreams is oh, my favorite. Rachel, how did I forget <laughs> the main one? The biggest one. Ah, yeah. Rachel. And I guess they, they actually like recreated that field in Ohio. It, it was, I, I think it was like in 2022, something like that. Yes. And uh, I had a friend who went out there for that. And that would be, really? and they actually had like a real game there in the, <gasps> Which would be pretty yeah, cool. Would be cool with the cornfield yeah. right there. Oh, yeah. I love. That. I mean, and and that's a movie that really actually has like something to say, uh, mm-hmm. you know, about censorship and about uh, generational trauma and forgiveness, and uh, yeah, it's it's a beautiful movie. From good things faith, in that I mean, movie. faith, mm-hmm. you know, relationships, faith. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, fatherhood, mm-hmm. all of those things. Yeah. 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 So that's a really, really good movie. But there are so many. I, one you get a little bit of a kind of an homage to is the Sandlot. Uh, yeah. In, in this movie. And you do believe. 
I, that's might be why my uh, boys really liked it. Cause they like the sand lot and that yeah. feeling of just, and cause these are boys playing versus like, you know, grown up professional players and some of these other movies, these are um, kids, their own mm-hmm. age. They yeah. saw themselves in these characters. Yeah. And so. it's fun. They have Patrick Renna who of course was in Sandlot. Uh, he's famous for the, <laughs> the <laughs> you're talking about me smalls <laughs> uh, line. He's great. And I, yeah, Sandlot, I mean, it's hard to imagine not liking Sandlot. It's just yeah. so, it's so classic. sweet. So fun. Yeah. yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Esther Hatch and her new entry in the Proper Scandal series, A Proper Facade. Get all the spoonworthy Regency romance you could want with this enticing new story. Nicholas Kendrick, Duke of Harrington, follows the rules of the tone meticulously. When he determines that Mercy Rothschild is the ideal candidate for a wife, he marches dutifully toward her along the courtship path. Desperate to extricate herself from Harrington's advances, Mercy concludes that there is only one course of action. She must push her intended into the arms of another woman. But when Mercy becomes acquainted with the man behind the proper facade, her plans come crashing down as she realizes that stiff and proper Harrington might be the very man she's been waiting for. If only she hadn't been so successful in her plot to thwart her chances with him. Get a proper facade wherever you purchase your books or use the affiliate link below. Go to estherhatch.com to learn more. That's estherhatch.com. Well, this movie, uh, I I really enjoyed it. I, I think that they did a good job of combining the, you know, the sports stuff, and the Little League stuff with everything going on at home and the drama uh, with the father getting sick and getting cancer and and uh, it, you really did feel for everything by the time it ended. Like it, it, it got me emotional, I think. Me too. And I did share this with you, but I'll share it with our listeners that it was a little tender for our family because we know some people going through cancer and my dear friend's mother who just passed away. And so that storyline will be tender for many people, but it, they handled it really beautifully, I think, in, in my opinion, but others might have different thoughts because each cancer journey can be different with also some similarities of, of that, you know, of a, a family going through, looking for answers, realizing that their hopes might not be, they not might not be answered in the way they had hoped. Yeah. This, this journey might end in a different way than they'd really like to see. So that, that was very tender. Um, I, I have to say though, that this just really touched my heart with these family members supporting each yeah. other, um, you know, always looking to what can I do for, my spouse, how can I help my children? I saw that come through so clearly in this movie. I really, really appreciated that. Yeah. And it really is a family story. I think the name you, you got to believe is going to be a little bit uh, misleading to some people. They're going to think, Oh, it's just, it's just a faith-based film. It's only for, and it's really not like they have a little bit uh, about, uh, about the faith and but not much uh it's 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 they only named it that because that's the name of like the organization uh yeah. that that they started uh, yeah that they started but uh but it's really about this family and how how you have to savor every moment that you have mm-hmm. with the people mm-hmm. that you love like take and that's what you know going through this this little league championship at the same time as going through this illness, like it, it, it just, it, it definitely taught all involved to, to savor every moment. Cause they only had yeah. so many left. Exactly. You know, and in them. a way too. Uh, oh, exactly. Um, and in a way too, there was a little bit of that theme of believing in each other, you know, believing in your fellow teammates, in your family members, in your friends, that they're there for you and that they also um, have your back like our our main boy that and I can't wait to hear your interview with him about how his teammates all said we're here with you you know we yeah. we love you and in a way that boys can say they don't say it mm-hmm. straight up like that but they show it in their actions and and stuff like that so yeah um, yeah and I asked him uh, what like does he ha- what kind of memories does he have this whole experience and it was really interesting to to hear what he had to say because it had to have been like an incredibly intense time of life. I mean, just oh, to you know, know. go through all of that. Oh, I know. Intense in your own personal life as your as your dad's being treated mm-hmm. for, for cancer. And then this 
intense journey of now going to this, these championships and, and having these extra practices and conditioning and mm-hmm. the pressure of these games and, you know, and, and all of those things. I, oh yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it amazing. I, I think that the two leads were, were really solid. Luke mm-hmm. Wilson uh, playing, uh, playing Bobby and, and uh, Greg Kinnear playing John Kelly. He's the yeah. coach of yeah. the team. And uh, I I really liked at the end with him saying that uh, that uh, that it was his best friend it was really sweet and says that he learned from Bobby to never take life so seriously. Uh, if, if you do, you'll never get out alive. And uh, I thought that was really sweet and lovely, you know, to to find the joy in yes. even the toughest times. And they had been through that together in their journey, uh, in their different experiences mm-hmm. as best friends. I love these two actors. I just, yeah. I've loved Luke Wilson since, you know, uh, with Reese Witherspoon. In, yeah, um, Legally Blonde. <laughs> Legally Blonde. And Greg Kinnear since many, many movies that yeah. he's been in. Um, I I just thought they did really well. I believed them in these roles yeah. as these coaches struggling with their jobs, Um you know, trying to be good fathers and good husbands, struggling with this um, this diagnosis. Um, Greg Kinnear just did, he did such a good job mm-hmm. as he was, and then the, his, his change through the movie from being this overworked, tired, realizing where are my priorities, you know? Yeah. And when he, like you quoted then in the funeral speech saying, look, this is where, this is where it's at. Love that journey. Luke Wilson made me cry. Yeah, his beautiful. Really good. Oh, he was so good. Their wives were both just amazing. Mm-hmm. The other coaches, uh, yeah. the baseball card owner who came and did some pitching, oh, the former uh, player who came and pitched with them. So funny. What a great role model he was. The other full on Texas coach with the mustache and the hat. Yeah. Loved him. Such comic relief. It's really, yeah. really good. And I loved it. The, I mean, maybe this would be considered a spoiler, but. But when things don't go quite the way that they'd hoped in the in the final game and the kids feeling like you let everybody down and just the dad saying, I couldn't be more proud. It's beautiful. It was very beautiful that that what a what a loving example. And for those who will um, it, it's not in your face, like you were saying, that faith message, but some people of faith might read more into that thinking of their own relationship with their father in heaven and how yeah. much he cheers us on mm-hmm. when we try. So I just, I, I found that parallel, but it wasn't, you know, yeah. saying nothing ever beats you over the head with here's the message you should take from this movie. I think there's space for people to take their own messages from it. The cool, crisp days of fall are calling. Fuel up for them with factors no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time to go back to school thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this month with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50. Use the code hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code hallmarkies50 at factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. And I I like that uh, he says that all all I've replayed is the moments I've missed. Oh, and you think yeah. at the end of your life that you're gonna think about all of the the your regrets, the great. And then, but no, all I've replayed is the moments I've missed, and I'm not gonna miss anymore. And I thought that was that was lovely. Very poignant, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
So yeah. they all decide that they are going to basically ha- win for for uh, for Bobby that they're going yeah. to play that uh, they're that they need to find something to rally about with the team, something you care about. Mm-hmm. And so that's when Robbie and the other boys say, "We're gonna we're going to win for your dad." It's yeah. it's really sweet. It's really it is sweet. so sweet. They put his name on their hats. They. And the ending of the movie, people should watch through the credits where they splice some of the real interviews and real footage from that championship and that whole season where that it, it is true. Like we were talking about how some movies are like, yeah, there, this one, this one, ha- this happened. Yeah, yeah. So, and they did rally around him. And I loved how they were trying to switch his name, Robert to rocket to try to help him like have the, uh, you know, the um, to run faster. Yeah. That was pretty funny. <laughs> goodness and oh another cute. i just i wrote down to another funny moment was that everybody eavesdrops in each family they're always like yeah. <laughs> like how do you know that i always listen honey you know, but, <laughs> yeah that's true that's true <laughs> well and they reach a point where basically he has to decide like am i going to go into surgery going to go into chemo or am i going to appreciate the time i have left and that's such a hard decision such a hard moment that that was definitely a very moving uh section of Mm -hmm. the film it really was that's where i think i I did have some tears because i uh, you know of so many families who are are looking at those questions and i read a poignant book about you know these ideas of end of life decisions and and what makes most sense for you and and he and he came to that decision and like he's and it just pairs so well with that idea of what moments are you missing, you know, at the end of your life? And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and yet you still have that idea of you got to believe. And so um, pairing that with, with what happens, I guess you, you just think that's life, right? Mm-hmm. I would love to write a Hollywood happy ending for everybody. Yeah. Where we all have hard themes in our life. And, and the idea is how are you dealing with that? How are you getting through that? How are you, relying on what you need to rely on through that because sometimes you're not going to get the perfectly scripted beautiful ending you hope for but in the end i guess it is the one you yeah. it, it's what you get what you get right yeah. i don't know and it's nice too to have a movie from hollywood that's just about good people like yes, there's no do. there's nobody that's abusive there's nobody yes. that's like everybody in this movie is a good person trying their yes, best they're trying i love that they're yeah. just, they're trying their best and i think how much of america is actually like this and you will see yourself mm-hmm. in this movie you're like those are the people i know these are the people that are actually should be depicted more and it yeah. can still be told in a good entertaining beautiful way yeah. you know so i wish yeah. they would take a message from this film and people should go see it to mm-hmm. show send a message that Hey, I care for this kind of film. I enjoy it. You should make more of it. You yeah, know? and it's getting a like a pretty decent rollout. This next, uh, it's coming to to Salt Lake at least on the 29th. Uh, so you want to keep an eye out for it uh, because yeah, you can totally take the whole family. There's something mm-hmm. to enjoy. I I just feel like we'll see what the reviews end up being. You know what other critics think, but. Uh, but I don't know. I just feel like you have to be like super cynical to not like enjoy this at least a little bit to get some. That whole look forward to this montage where they are singing Rawhide. I thought mm-hmm. that is a creative That's way fun. to show time passing and the montage of, you know, growth happening with this uh-huh. funny song. So yeah, it's, you're exactly right. It's creative. You're, I mean, cynical reviewers are out there and they're yeah. going to say the things that they don't like about it. And I get that they have their opinions and, but in general, like, my whole family loved it. So. Yeah, it's just like a sweet, simple little movie. It's it's not gonna. It's not like a masterpiece, but it's like a, I I I really I really did enjoy it. And uh, you know, they they have the the longest little league game in history, and that was a pretty I think good section. That was pretty uh, well done. Kept the tension going. Yeah, a lot of tension. And right now, the little league world championships are happening. So this oh, is very time is very timely. We've been watching some on TV with our, and I think you know, I and I'm like, boys, this can you imagine playing in this game that went well into the night, exhausted. Mm-hmm. The way the pitcher had the rules were, you couldn't 
pitch more than this many innings so that they have to bring in somebody else and yeah. we'll let, uh, let you watch it but um but that this the, there was that was pretty dramatic mm-hmm. that was for sure yeah well and so when he first gets diagnosed he decides to write a letter to Robbie and uh, he opens that letter with his son at the end of the movie uh, Robbie does. And uh, that was, it was very sweet. It was very tender. Was I mean, I can't sweet. imagine. I, I, I don't know. I would almost, that would be, I can't imagine how, like I would need like lots of support to read a letter like that. Oh my gosh. For sure. Be and, emotional. Oh, so much. I would almost <laughs> put it off. Like, I know it's there. I don't know if I can read it. You know, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then when you're ready, you're like, okay, we're, I don't know if I want to read this alone or if I want everybody around me and his darling little boy in his lap. It's just, yeah. I think that was the perfect thing to have this sweet, sweet little soul. That's just like, I love my dad and I'm hearing him support him as he's going, he's probably, and he starts to cry anyway. Yeah. That was yeah. so sweet. So I think that most people listening to certainly our show will, will enjoy this little movie. I think you should check it out. And uh, I, I'm you know grateful. I got to talk to Robbie and I hope you enjoyed those uh, in that interview that I put in this in this episode. And uh, if you get a chance, if you're wa- if you're listening, if you get a chance to see the movie, I'd love to hear what you think uh, in the comments or on Twitter. And thanks so much, Mary, for doing this. I really appreciate it. it, it when I when I was thinking about okay, what could I do? You were the one that was like, oh, I hope that she <laughs> says yes because. I don't know. I just thought you'd be perfect for talking it about is. this film. It's it's right up my alley. You do you know me. <laughs> I thought this is the sweetest movie. And yeah. and like I said, my boys all loved it. 16, 13, 11, and 8. All my children, we watched it together. And it was really a, an enjoyable experience. It brought some good conversations, too. So oh, yeah. Yeah. thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. It was just a joy. Well, I I really do appreciate it. Well, again, let us know what you think if you get a chance to see it. And uh, if you, and and you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes, where you'll see my review for this film, I'll post on there. And uh, if you, and make sure to follow us at Hallmarkies Pod, Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. Really appreciate that. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. And uh, we have our patron group, which is the biggest way you can support us. Really appreciate that. And we have the merch store. Take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. Thanks so much, Mary. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.